The importance of the bacteria in the gastrointestinal tract is finally becoming more recognized by the medical community with more and more studies demonstrating how these 10 trillion bacteria are beneficial. It's taken a lot of work to get gastroenterologists to look at this. And what we've done is looked at stool as just a waste product and haven't given it any thought in terms of how important it is in the metabolism of our body. Well, now we have a study that's showing that the wrong bacteria in the gut may suppress DNA repair, altering colon cancer risk. And with 50,000 Americans dying from colorectal cancer every year, we're going to talk about the imbalance of the good and the bad gut bacteria and what this means as far as cancer growth. Well, it's really something to behold when you look at the fact that there are so many microbes in the gut and actually 10 times as many as there are cells in the human body. So we're looking at something that's really dramatic in terms of a volume. And there's more metabolic activity in the gut than there is in any organ system in the body, including the brain. So it counts as an organ. It counts as an organ. You wouldn't think it was an organ, but indeed it is. And it has a lot of functions that are important to maintaining a normal uh, homeostasis in our body. Well, one thing I know about is that it helps to crowd out bad bacteria uh -huh. if we, you know, have an infection, and it reduces inflammation. Exactly. Um, it helps our digestion. It um, even helps with the prevention of spreading infection. Exactly. Yeah. Well, there are other things as well. I mean, it, it, it's a major detoxifier in the human body. It makes certain vitamins like vitamin K, B5, B6, biotin, butyrate, which is a major metabolic fuel of the intestinal tract, and it even boosts immunity. So we're looking at a lot of functions of the stool. And it even helps us to lose weight. Well, there are some studies suggesting that that's true. It's an interesting finding. Well, you know, it's interesting because these probiotics are in yogurt. Uh-huh. But there's just, there's not enough. And when we're looking at some of the things that, it, it, that go wrong, when we have something that's called dysbiosis, meaning when the relationship between the bacteria in the gut and the human body is not ideal. We're looking at a lot of problems that have to do with the activation of enzymes, uh, with depletion of B12 and certain amino acids, uh, with saturated, uh, saturation of essential fatty acids causing leaky gut. Uh, it's important in autoimmune disease, it's inflammatory bowel disease. It, I mean, the list it just goes, goes on. on and on. So we're looking at a major important uh, function of the digestive tract and the contents in the stool. So one of the things that's a little concerning is if people have um, gastric problems, mm -hmm. stomach problems, mm -hmm. or they have things like ulcerative colitis, <laughs> can these change the flora in the GI tract and increase our risks uh, for cancer. Absolutely, and, and we know that that, that happens. I mean, the, the flexibility of the intestinal tract microbes is stunning, and it will adapt to what we feed it, what the health of the gut is, what the health of the immune system is. So, for example, if you have lactose uh, deficiency or lactase deficiency, so you can't metabolize milk sugar, well, that's not going to be good for the for us, because those bacteria in the intestinal tract that can metab metabolize it also make products that are going to make it difficult for us to stay healthy. So the bloating and distension and cramps, etc., is a big factor. And that happens with a lot of diseases. If we don't have the right microbes there to function with us in a symbiotic relationship, we get sick. Well, the other thing that I find that's interesting is that many people that are sick are given prescription medications mm. or medications maybe that aren't even prescription. And many of those medicines can cause a dis this dysbiosis or the leaky gut syndrome. Exactly. So could you mention some of those drugs? Oh, sure. We're looking at antibiotics as, as the most powerful thing that does that because as soon as you take an antibiotic, by mouth, it's going to wipe out all the microbes that are sensitive to that antibiotic. And what does it leave? It leaves you with those microbes that are resistant to it that are the ones that are most likely to cause disease in people. So antibiotics are a big one, but non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, 
uh, things that are like birth control pills and steroids and innumerable, innumerable other kinds of, of drugs are going to make a big difference in what lives in the gut and how we react to what's there. So I think it's a good time now to talk about things that we can do if we do have this problem. Like, what can we do with our diet? Like fiber, for example. Well, fiber is one of the most important things that we consume because the insoluble fiber that we can't digest are what the healthy bacteria in the gut depend on for their nourishment. So if we guide uh, the development of the right bacteria by eating plenty of fiber, that's a good thing. Then there are a whole bunch of supplements that do a lot to support gut function, things like L-glutamine, which is a major metabolic fuel of the small intestine and products such as Ultra Clear Sustain that's made by Metagenics. That's a wonderful product that has about 50 different things in it that the gut says thank you very much for providing. Or quercetin, which is a bioflavonoid that is a powerful anti-inflammatory agent that can do a lot to support gut function. And one last one would be licorice root extract, which is a powerful way of coating the whole digestive tract so that when, it's, when, it, when it comes in contact with Products that bacteria are making, or the stomach acids, or the bile, it's strong. It has a protective layer. And then what about vitamin D? Vitamin D is probably the most important one I should have mentioned. And that's because you can't get well without vitamin D. Your gut depends on it. And we know that the so-called leaky gut syndrome is what develops and in people who are vitamin D deficient. If you want to learn more about that, Go to drsabuda.com and put leaky gut syndrome in and put vitamin D in, and all those references will come up. And all the other regular lifestyle measures like getting oh. enough sleep and exercising and eating a healthy diet right. and, and uh, reducing the stress in your life, because we know that all those things can affect our health in general anyway, but they do affect our, our colon. Exactly. So if you want to be well, We've got to take advantage of making sure that our intestinal tract is in the best shape they can be because what grows on down there depends on what goes on in our lifestyle. If our lifestyle is healthy, our gut's probably going to be healthy because the bacteria that live down there are going to be the right ones. <laughs> 